ब्रह्मचर्यव्रती दंडी सर्वेदांत पंडित श्रीमद्विवेकोगी मं प्रचोदयदुसर्वदा अकॉर्डिंग टू स्वामीजी रिनेशन एंड सर्वीस आर दि ट्वीन ऐडियल ऑफ इंडिया सो वेदर इट ईज कर्मयोग भक्तियोग राजयोग ज्ञानयोग वेर वर् इट ईज ए वेरी इंपारटेंट प्लेज इज गिवन टू रिनेशन now what is to be renounced so when we talk of renunciation some of us will say yes i have given up eating potatoes i have given up smoking i have given up drinking this all that amount to renunciation we have seen in the karma yoga what is renunciation i mind my all doubt have to be renounced even arjuna asks this question in to krishna what exactly is renunciation so krishna says karma bhala ichcha it is the renunciation of your karma bhale ichcha because it is very difficult for us to do work without asking for a return similarly in bhakti yoga also it is very difficult for us to love somebody but somewhere in the corner of our mind there will be some desire a desire if we are going to god of course we will desire for our well being or we pray for somebody to get out of their sickness so some desire is lurking somewhere or other can we purify our love in such a way that is not even a pin drop of selfishness is there is it possible that itself will become such a great sadhana you see to remove from our mind from our love all the desires so swami ji speaks of it what he says the mighty attraction in the direction of god makes all other attractions vanish from him so it is a test for us how do we know my attraction towards god is complete or pure there is no other attraction in us then for anything that is why you know when suradas was given the capacity to see krishna gave him the sight he saw krishna then after that he said take away my sight i don't want this sight after seeing you to see anything else i don't want it at all so that is the test of renunciation so swami ji says this mighty infinite love of god which enters his heart leaves no place for any other love to live there so we have a rare scene you know in our heart there were six chairs in all those six chairs some uninvited guests were staying so when bhakti enters into them the personalities of all those six have changed they have all been transformed into love for god love for your ishta devata love for truth love for the well being of the entire universe in so many ways the same truth can capture our attention in many ways we can say i love truth i can say i love the whole of creation i can say i love my ishta devata i can even say i love my parents like god no problem once our mind is devoid of selfish motivation that very same love takes on to the hue of bhakti so once bhakti enters there the divine waters of the ocean of love which is god himself there is no place for the little loves 
That is to say, the bhakta's renunciation. See, what is he renouncing? The bhakta's renunciation is that vairagya or non-attachment for all things that are not God, which results from anuraga or great attachment to God. So that sort of a absolute purification. There is nothing but God there. Day and night, every breath of ours is a act of is an act of surrender, an act of love. So like that, that is the Parabhakti Gopis Mira. Huh? They have all shown us that. Is it possible, we may ask? Yes, it is possible. Then what about our earthly life then, our material well-being? That is what Krishna assures, Yoga Kshemam Maham Yaham. Who is going to be totally centered in me, they don't have to worry about anything at all. He speaks of this bhakti aspect. When he came back to India in the Rameshwaram temple, to the surging crowd there who had come to receive him, knowing fully well the attitude of the normal people towards bhakti, to the temple, to the worship, to the divinity in the temple, knowing fully that in a very, very eloquent way, he talks to them about this worship. So at Ra Rameshara he says, Rameshara, external worship is only a symbol of internal worship, but internal worship and purity are the real things. Without them, external worship would be of no avail. Therefore, you must all try to remember this. You know, that is a mistake for the entire Hindu community. Yeah, we make so much of the God, our love for God and everything, but at the same time we forget to serve the God in human form which is there in front. So somewhere he is telling, this is the gist of all worship, to be pure and to do good to others. He who sees Shiva in the poor, in the weak and in the deceased, really worships Shiva. If he sees Shiva only in the image, his worship is but preliminary. So it was a great warning to the people. Probably Rameshwaram lectures are one of some of his very first, you know, after landing in India. So what he is going to give to India, this word, here we get the first indication of it. We have seen in our Karma Yoga, serve man, serve God. So that he is emphasizing. We can have temple, rituals, everything. But if we are seeing God only in the image, only in the idol which you worship, then vain indeed is your worship. You know, later somewhere he says, break the idol and go to the ideal. Yeah, and go to Shiva, worship. But don't stop with that idol. What is Shiva standing for? That universal being, the personified form of Tyaga. When the Kalakuda emerged from the Shira Madhana, churning of the milky ocean, and the whole world was threatened of destruction, he calmly consumes the visha, poison, and helps both devas and asuras. No difference. So, in our life also, you know, there will be so many occasions when this Kalakuda visha emerges in family life, in our social life. At that time, we should remember Worshipping Shiva, having bhakti towards Shiva is not only a temple-oriented worship. We should be able to consume that visha, that poison, and bring happiness and peace in the surroundings. 
So Swamiji in Rameshwaram, he gives a very, very meaningful message to all of us that worship Shiva, worship Krishna, worship Devi, not in the temples, but see them all in the people around. So renounce your personal interests and serve them as their servants as you would serve the God himself.